Some of the most brutal and shocking execution methods used throughout history include hanging, drawing and quartering, burning at the stake and beheading by axe. Many of these execution methods were used inside of Tudor England in the 1500s during the reigns of kings and queens such as Henry VIII, Bloody Mary and Elizabeth I. But executions were common for centuries before and they were aimed at times for public humiliation and to bring great shame and pain to an individual accused of a number of crimes. Some of the most sinister execution methods include the oubliette, where an enemy would be simply locked inside a tiny cell and would be forgotten. However, there was a Viking method used, which was purely for public spectacle and ritualistic sacrifice, and it has gone down in history as one of the most barbaric. There is some debate as to whether the blood eagle was actually used or not, but it lives on today in history as a feared and notorious method of execution. Join us today as we look at the Blood Eagle, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Blood Eagle was important in its form of ritualistic sacrifice, and as an offering to the gods, as much as it was to inflict pain and suffering onto a high-ranking criminal or enemy. According to two sagas, the victims were forced and secured into a position where they were lying down. Huge crowds would then gather to witness the sacrifice. The Vikings loved their gods, and the Blood Eagle was seen as a sacrifice to them, with the enemies of the Vikings being killed. Lying down, an executioner, sometimes a high-ranking member of the settlement, would take an axe to the condemned. They would take their weapon to the victim's back, and would cut open a large wound, or flap of skin and muscle from their back. Following this huge cut, they would then sever the ribs from the spine of the victim, would then pull the ribs out to the sides to form the wings. After this, the executioner would then complete the blood eagle by pulling out the victim's lungs and laying them over the extended ribs. And it was just before here that someone would likely have been killed. The point was to create a pair of wings and then the victim could be suspended and displayed in huge scenes. There has been much debate as to whether this practice actually occurred or whether it is just propaganda from the Viking sagas. The Blood Eagle does appear at times in Norse literature, and there have been also references to it. There are two specific victims of this practice mentioned, one being Halfdan Harleg, a prince, and the other being King Ayla of Northumbria. Both of these executions were performed allegedly in consequence for a father being killed. The first account from the late 9th century claims that Tor Finar ritualistically executed Harald Fairhair's son, Halfdan Longleg. It was said that the execution was done as a sacrifice to Odin. It was said of Halfdan's blood eagle, Einar made them carve an eagle on his back with a sword, and then cut the ribs all from the backbone and draw the lungs there out, and gave him to Odin for the victory he had won. It was also referenced in another saga, saying, After Earl Einar, went up to Halfdan and cut the blood eagle on his back, in this fashion that he thrust his sword into his chest by the backbone and severed all the ribs down to the loins, and then pulled out the lungs, and that was Halfdan's death. In both of these accounts, the blood eagle is clearly described as a method of Halfdan's execution, but it's closely linked with the sons of the notorious Viking leader, Ragnar Lothbrok, that we consider the blood eagle. Ragnar Lothbrok had many sons, but he was killed by King Ayla of Northumbria, whom it said executed Ragnar by feeding him to a pit of snakes, in retribution to the raids and violence Ragnar had inflicted upon Northumbria. Following this, Ragnar's sons set out to avenge their father, and either the boneless captured King Ayla of Northumbria. Ayla was killed following a battle for the control of the city of York, and it was said that, they caused the bloody eagle to be carved on the back of Ayla, and they cut away all of the ribs from the spine, then they ripped out his lungs. The blood eagle was referenced again in the 11th century, and it was written again that Ayla was killed by the horrific execution method. Ayla's death was recounted again, and it was said that they did at the appointed time, and when they had captured him, ordered the figure of the eagle to be cut in his back, rejoicing to crush their most ruthless foe, by marking him with the cruelest of birds. 
Not satisfied with impressing a wound on him, they salted the mangled flesh. There are other accounts of the blood eagle. It was said, now the blood eagle, with a broad sword, the killer of Sigmund carved on the back. Fewer were more valiant, as the troops dispersed, a chief of people who made the raven glad. But there is debate as to whether the blood eagle was ever practised or not, or whether it was just used to make the stories and sagas better, and to make the Vikings more feared. Doubt has been cast over the use of it as a sacrificial method. It has been compared to other brutal torture and execution methods, such as crucifixion. However, what has been questioned is the skill that a Viking chieftain had to perform the blood eagle well, to carve open the back and perform the ritualistic sacrifice. One of the legendary execution methods performed throughout history was the blood eagle. Whether it was actually performed or not is up to debate. However, it's practices like this that made the Vikings very feared. Through raids and propaganda, they became known as some of the most brutal and feared people across the medieval period. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.